Soundless Angular is now in developer preview in Angular 20. In this video, we want to check what it means for you and your application. So let's dive right in. So far, our apps were change detected with the help of a tool called Sound.js. It's not really a tool, it's more like a third party library. So if you would check your package JSON, you probably find there's Sound.js. And Sound.js is actually a library that monkey patches all the async APIs. So whenever there's a set timeout, a promise, or a click handler, Sound.js actually knows about it. So that means whenever something async happens in your application, Sound.js actually tells Angular, hey Angular, something async happened. Please go ahead and run change detection. Angular then invokes change detection and traverses the component tree and does dirty checking to know and figure out which properties have to be updated. Now this dirty checking and the traversal of the tree is suboptimal and the Angular team is aware of this. That's also why we got other change detection strategies like onPush, for example. onPush already improves the situation, but it's far from perfect. But still, Sound.js triggers change detection too often. So it might trigger change detection when we actually do not want it, and this can have quite some performance impacts. Sound.js has been an essential part of Angular since its beginnings. So it's a design decision made in the past. And now the Angular team wants to improve this by going soundless means having a new way of figuring out when to run change detection without relying on Sound.js. So now how does this look like? Basically, when you want to go soundless in your application, so in the app config TS, you can have this line which calls provide soundless change detection. Now, if you are in Angular 20 and if you are generating a new project using the Angular CLI, the Angular CLI will actually prompt you, do you want to create a soundless application? If you say yes, this line is already added for you and you do not have to do anything. If you are in older applications, you have to add this line manually, plus you also have to clean up existing imports of Sound.js. And don't worry, Angular will tell you if you still import Sound.js. So it will print a warning to the console. Now, once you go soundless, the change detection changes a bit because change detection will be run when a DOM event is bound in the template. So let's say you have a click handler, for example. At that point, change detection will run. If a signal is updated, if the async pipe is used in a template, and the reason for that is actually the same as this one, if you, for example, manually call change detector ref mark for check, then change detection will also run. But the reason why the async pipe works is because under the hood, the async pipe actually calls the change detector ref mark for check. Another thing is if the inputs are changed. So if you have a component which accepts some inputs and those inputs are changed, means by reference, not just like you have an array and you push a value into it, it has to be a new reference, then it will also run. The component ref set input is just an API which does something similar whenever you create dynamic components. But it basically means whenever input changes or if a component is created or destroyed. Sounds good so far. This is pretty theoretical, but now let's take a look at more practical things so that you also know what this means for your application. So let's take a look at some scenarios, some common scenarios. So the first scenario is you have a property which updates via click handler. So that means we have a button with a click handler and in this click handler we have a count variable and we just increment that count variable and we use template bindings to display that count variable. And now if you would run this in a zoneful application and in a zoneless application, it still nicely updates in both scenarios. And the reason for that is that we have the click handler and Angular knows about this handler and then can run change detection. Cool, so far, no surprises. Now let's dive into scenario two, where we have an HTTP request with a subscribe call. So spoiler, this is an anti-pattern, so do not use this um, or try to avoid it whenever possible. But still, I've seen it in so many applications and therefore I think it's important to mention. So let's say we do an HTTP call. So we fetch some posts and then we have a manual subscription. So we do subscribe and we take out the data and assign it to a normal property. We then use the JSON pipe to actually display this property or the, the posts or the data inside our template. 
Now this would actually work fine in a zone full or in an application that uses zone. But if we go zoneless, this doesn't work anymore. So the data would actually never update. And the reason for that is because there's no more patching of the async events. And what you should do here instead to avoid the situations. So the best thing would be to have a two signal, which basically converts your observable, which you get back from the HTTP call into a signal. And then you can use that signal in the template. Another way would be to use the async pipe, but still you should prefer the two signal. We will see in a bit why. And the last but not least would be to use mark for check, which is not recommended here. So you could have after this line a mark change detector ref mark for check. Ah, and there is one more. You could refactor data into a signal and then it would also work. So as we mentioned, if you use the async pipe for the exact same scenario, so if you would have data or posts with the async pipe, this would work because under the hood it calls mark for check. But again, prefer to signal over the async pipe. Now, scenario four are timer-based updates. So this is a pretty interesting one because if you check timer-based updates, you have a set interval and the count and you would just update the count and display it in the template. So let's quickly have a look so to see what I mean. So let's say we have a counter which is zero, right? And we go to the template and we display that counter. Now inside our constructor, we have a set interval. And in that set interval, we say this.counter is equal this.counter plus one. And we run that periodically. Now, what you see in the template is just a zero. You do not see anything else because it doesn't update. Now, how could we fix this? Again, we are here in a zoneless application. So the easiest way to fix this is to just convert this into a signal. And then, of course, here we say now it's update. If you do not know this, we have nice videos on this. Um, so basically, we are just updating a signal. And then whenever we use a signal, we have to call it. And now you can see how it nicely updates. And that leads me to the next point. So you can use signals to update or to trigger the change detection. So that basically means whenever you have a signal, change detection will be triggered. So at this point, you probably see the recurring pattern that use signals and you are safe. So using signals is pretty good because it will work in zoneless, but um, there are also some other benefits which we will see just in a bit. If you do not know about signals, I would strongly recommend you to check out our Angular Signals Masterclass ebook because signals are the future of Angular and you should really get to know them and become an expert in them. Then, as we've seen, you can always call change detector ref mark for check. So mark for check just marks your view as dirty um, and then basically the view gets updated during the next cycle, right? And this works in zoneless and in zone chairs. And the last but not least is whenever you use the component ref set input or when you change input data of a component. This will also update the view. Now, there are actually the two scenarios which might break, which are the timer-based updates and if you have manual subscriptions or scenarios where you update the data which are, is not a signal. Now you probably ask yourself, this sounds cool, I can get performance for free, but how can I update or how can I prepare my application for zoneless mode? Because probably you maintain a bigger, a larger code base and you are wondering how can I make it in such a way that if I go zoneless that it's still ready and it still works. So there are two things. The first thing is go all in on on push. So regarding if you are zoneless or not, you should go all in on on push. If you are in a zoneless scenario, you are guaranteed that this will work. If you are in zone full scenario, you have already gained quite some performance by going on push. So make sure that you are on push and then you can actually go zoneless. That's the first thing. If you have the resources and the time to rewrite everything to signal, that would be the recommended approach. 
because with signals, as we've seen, the view updates and you are safe. But that's not the only thing. The thing also is pretty future proof because currently we have zone chairs and zoneless. And in the future, we might have another way of change detection where basically the view only updates if a signal changes. So that means we have now seen this scenario where we have a click handler, this one here, and we update a count variable on a click. And this still works today in zone chairs and in zoneless scenario. But in the future, if we get to a signal based change detection model, I don't know how this would look like. Maybe we get a new flag on a component like signal true or I don't know. But if we get there, then the view would only update if this would be a signal. So you would be really future proof if you go with signals or all in on signals. Then one last word about the whole hybrid scheduling. So since Angular 18, we have hybrid scheduling. So hybrid scheduling basically means that whenever you have a signal, it just updates regardless of where you are. So that means if you are in a application that uses ng-zone, you can today inject the ng-zone and run outside Angular. So that was a thing that we did for some expensive stuff so that you do not trigger change detection all the times that this interval updates. So you could say, hey, I run this outside Angular and there is, is no need for updates. Now, if you would set a signal here in hybrid mode, this would update. And the Angular team actually has a flag which is called ignore changes outside zone, which you can set to true, which opts out of this behavior. So that means whenever you set this to true, signal updates would not trigger change detection. But this is now deprecated. And because I think they initially introduced it and wanted to see if there are problems and give people the opportunity to actually opt out, but they saw that it works pretty well. So I can imagine very well that in the future they will remove this flag. So I would not rely on that, but um, that's just that you know that there's a hybrid scheduling going on. And in Angular 20, Sonless made it into a developer preview. I expect it to make it to stable in 21. And the Angular team is putting a lot of effort in also in the SSR story and has improved their error handling and so on. So Sonless is the future and I would recommend you to check that your applications are on push. If you have time and resources, rewrite to signal and then get those performance benefits. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel and see you next time.